Talk about a big invasion of your privacy. The state of California is sending out notices like this one in the mail, revealing your party registration. Anyone who sees this will know how you're registered to vote. A big violation of privacy. Plus, we got to talk about California Democrats and their friends in the liberal media already are beating the drum for higher taxes to deal with the state's massive budget shortfall. All of that and more coming up. I'm Carl DeMaio, chairman of Reform California, and I want you to check your mailbox, and you might have already received one of these, a notice from election officials across the state of California revealing your personal information in the mail. Very bad practice and a violation of your privacy. We're going to get to that in just a minute. But let me first start out with carrying on the conversation we started in our last episode. In our last uh, episode, I told you about California's massive budget deficit. $65 $65 billion, although at Reform California, we, we project it's much higher than that. And of course, longtime viewers of this podcast know we've been you know, beating the drum, warning you that the state's finances were in perilous shape, that we were going to head for a fiscal cliff. And here we are. We have hit it, we hit it going 90 miles an hour. Um, $65 billion is the number. Again, I think that's a low number. It's going to get worse than that. It's all because Politicians are out of control in their spending. Uh, the budget is completely reckless. It's been that way for years with the supermajority Democrats who write the budget and give away the goodies to all their special interest backers, particularly the government employee unions, which always are trying to grow the size of government, give away salary hikes and pension spikes. Uh, but on top of that, California has been so toxic, so um, punishing to taxpayers, particularly job creators and the wealthy, that they have fled the state. And what have they taken with them? Tax increment. When people leave the state, they no longer pay income taxes here. And they go to another state and they give their wealth and they give their contribution, uh, their their, um, tax increment to that state. So we're left with people fleeing the state. And the few people that are dumb enough to move into this state are probably doing it because they see California as a welfare state. Lots of freebies. So go to California. And and the numbers show that the census data, we covered this in a previous podcast, show that the flight of millions of people out of California has an actual demographic. Wealthy people are leaving, poor people are uh, coming in. Although on the whole, more people are leaving than than coming in anyways. So you have less people to contribute, more people taking, and as a result, you have a massive fiscal shortfall with runaway spending. So um, I told you that they were going to try to raise your taxes, and already you're seeing the drumbeat from the liberal media establishment that supports the California Democrat supermajority and their you know politicians, uh, and they're already gaslighting and they're already narrative driving. Here's a column. Uh, in the Los Angeles Times from George Skelton, uh, who's a wingnut lefty. Uh, Sacramento politicians need the guts to fix California money wo- woes. Now, you and I might say when, when someone says, hey, politicians need the guts to fix the, uh, the, 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 the fiscal problems, you and I think it takes guts to make cuts because you have to say no to powerful special interests. That's not what George Skelton is suggesting. And no surprise, right? This guy's a liberal tax and spender. Nope, George Skelton thinks that it takes guts to saddle you with higher taxes. This guy's an asshat. Let me just say it. Um, I can say that because I'm not on radio anymore. I can say whatever I want in a, in a, in a, in a a, uh, direct way. This guy is absolutely offensive uh, because he thinks that you're not paying enough in taxes. Californians not paying enough in taxes. Just absolute insanity that this guy's untethered from reality. And of course, our politicians in Sacramento and the supermajority, these Democrats are untethered from reality as well. We have the highest income tax, the highest sales tax, the highest gas tax, the highest car tax. Despite Prop 13, because of our property values, we pay some of the highest uh, property taxes. We also have the highest electricity rates and water rates because of hidden taxes and fees. Everything is higher on the tax and government revenue side of the ledger. George Skelton, you are certifiably insane or you're a liar or a combination thereof. 
But he comes up with this, oh, we need to have guts, guts to do the right thing. He says $68 billion deficit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we told you that year, uh, years ago, George Skelton. Uh, goes on to say that uh, they stumbled into the uh, budget deficit because um, they overestimated what tax revenues would come in. That's called Enron-style accounting. They don't want to make tough choices, so they basically say, oh, no, rosy scenario, rosy scenario. We've seen this movie before. We know how these guys work. And so when you look at his whole entire column, starts out saying, oh, it was a mistake that we have a budget deficit. They didn't, they didn't project right. No, you idiot. They spent too much. It doesn't take a rocket scientist or a fiscal accountant to figure that out. You spent too much. And I could go through the wasteful spending. I mean, for God's sakes, look at all the $100,000 earners at transparentcalifornia.org, the website that shows you all the salaries and pension payouts for government employees. Or maybe it's the free health care for illegal immigrants. Oh, ever thought that that would cost a little bit of money? Uh, look, it's a spending problem. It's not a, oh, they got the numbers wrong in the forecast. We knew that we were headed towards a soft um, uh, stock market. The stock market went down. We're heavily dependent upon income tax revenues, particularly capital gains tax from the wealthiest Californians. We see people leaving the state of California. What did you think was going to happen? It, it, this was predictable, and we predicted it here on the um, Reform California podcast years ago. Uh, and particularly uh, in the past year, we've been beating the drum that they need to cut spending ASAP because we're headed for the fiscal cliff. Um, now, Mr. Skelton throws one line in here on spending. He said they could have had had the foresight to act long before the spring, which is what I was saying. But of course, Skelton wasn't. He's seen the movie before. On Newsom's watch, starting in 2019, annual state spending has jumped 53%. $100 billion up from the $203 billion budget he inherited from Jerry Brown. So that's a line in there. And then he says, but overspending is only part of the problem. This is what we call touching a base so that you can now go on to advance your, your rotten agenda. And his rotten agenda is tax increases. So he, he throws it in there because he knows that people like me is going to say, we're going to say, it's the spending stupid. And he doesn't want to look like a complete idiot, but he is a complete idiot and a liar. So he says overspending is part of the problem. No, overspending is the entirety of the problem. And frankly, high taxes, part of the problem as well, because you're pushing people out the door which means that your high taxes actually don't produce more revenue. It produces less. Go to go get an economics class and, and sign up for one. So we go here and he says, less money came in than expected because of California's warped tax system. All he says about that warped tax system is that it relies on wealthy income taxpayers. But he doesn't call for a tax cut for them. No, 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 no. He's calling for a tax increase for the rest of us. Oh boy, that'll, that'll really solve things. You're just going to punish people and more people are going to leave the state of California. It's not just the rich people. Um, what, what he's basically saying here is that we need to change our income tax system so that we're not so dependent on the capital gains taxes, but rather we spread the tax burden out with a higher sales tax and higher property taxes and higher income taxes for people at the lower end of the spectrum. And I don't know, mileage tax, gas tax, car tax, everywhere you look, a tax, a tax, a tax. Look at all the paragraphs he spends on this crap. He did one quick throwaway on spending and he goes all through tax, 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 tax. Do you see the problem? He's just a reflection of the problem. And that's why at Reform California, we are leading the cause, the charge to shake up our state. We have to, we have to cut the wasteful spending. We have more than enough money. Money is not the problem. It's the out of control spending that's a problem. And I urge you to join us. Check out our website, reformcalifornia.org, reformcalifornia.org. Also, like this video. Let's get the truth out there because we're warning people that a tax increase is coming. They're driving the narrative, and this George Skelton op-ed is just uh, one of what we expect to be a constant chorus, a drumbeat, 
of calls for fixing the problem, which is people are paying too too lot too too uh, little in taxes. We have a campaign at stopcaliforniataxhikes.com. Stopcaliforniataxhikes.com. It is to pass California Taxpayer Protection Initiative. We collected 1.4 million signatures and got this on the ballot November 2024. It would stop tax increases from taking effect, making it harder for politicians to raise our taxes, and it would invalidate tax increases that were adopted um, starting January 1st, 2022. So it actually represents um, some savings for everyone immediately. It would stop the politicians from calling something a fee when in fact it's a tax. It's a powerful ballot measure. Check it out at stopcaliforniataxhikes.com. Also take a look at the number of taxes that they're thinking about implementing in the state. I've got a list of, uh, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven tax increases that they're looking to impose just next year to try to fill their budget deficit that they created. Um, and so when Skelton says, what, what was his column headline? Let's go back to that headline. Oh, Sacramento politicians need the guts to fix money woes. In other words, they need the guts to raise taxes on the little guy. They've been doing that crap all along. It doesn't take guts. That's their MO. You know what would be really gutsy? Politicians telling the special interests, go pound sand. You've gotten more than your fair share for years, and it's time for you to tighten the damn belt so that we can actually get back to the core services for Californians and not gouge them uh, uh, on their taxes. A couple of things I want to get to real quick. Um, first, uh, we're running short on time, and I want to get to this absurd mailer that was sent out by California election uh, officials. Um, but this is my opportunity to remind you, click that notification button, subscribe to this channel. This is our daily podcast where we bring you news and information um, on our campaigns, on breaking stories throughout the state so that you are not gaslit by the state's liberal media enterprise. This is where we're giving you the real story behind the story every single day and keeping you informed and giving you empowerment. We want you to take part of our campaigns to make a difference in the state of California. So subscribe to this channel, click that notification button, share this video, like this video, comment so we can break through the uh, algorithm of big tech and get it spread out to more people. And if you can, join our fight at reformcalifornia.org by chipping in a contribution. Let me talk about this real quick. A no number of our um, Reform California supporters have told me about this. Um, and I'll, I'll ask Dylan to maybe scan this and, and put this in the video. It's a mailer sent out by each of the county registrar voters at the direction of the state of California. And as your name on it, this is blotted out because I got it from one of our supporters. But if you notice on this, it says the word Republican. You see that? Republican. This is not on the inside of the mailer. This is on the outside of the mailer. So every postal clerk knows your party registration. I'm not saying they would do something wrong about that party registration, but your party registration, registration is your private business. You know, things that are sent in the mail, people see that stuff, uh, you know, might get in the wrong box. It's in your neighbor box. Maybe it's uh, at an apartment building. Nobody, nobody should know how you're registered to vote. It's your private information. Why are they putting this out there? Are they trying to do cancel culture? Are they trying to uh, intimidate people? Now, you might say, well, Carl, that's how they do it on the printer because the name's on the front and the, the party registration's on the back. Well, no. If you open it up in the inside, it's also printed on the inside. So there was no need. There was no need to put this on the front and mail it out. Now, the reason why I think they're justifying sending this out, again, it does not have to be on the outside, is that in the presidential primary coming up, certain parties have different rules as to whether you can vote in the primary. For example, the Democrat Party allows independents to vote in their presidential uh, March primary. I mean, wow, re your reward as an independent is you, you may be able to vote for Joe Biden. Some reward. Um, on the Republican side, you actually have to be a registered Republican in order to vote in the Republican presidential contest. Um, I'm not going to get into the pros and cons of th those policies. I'm just simply telling you, if you want to vote in the Republican presidential contest and you're an independent, 
or if you're a Democrat, you're going to have to re-register to the Republican Party uh, in order to do that. So that is a justification the election office told me as to why they're mailing this out because they want people to know, hey, you might need to re-register before then. But I don't buy that. Here's why. In the state of California, we have same-day re- voter registration. So if you walked into the register- into your polling station and they told you, oh, you're registered as an independent, you can't vote for uh, Donald Trump for president. You can immediately re-register on the spot and get a provisional ballot. So um, this is an easily fixable problem, but they chose to mail out this at taxpayer expense um, statewide, and, and I, I, I'm troubled by it. I'm troubled by the way they did it. Um, they should have they should have uh, uh, been more responsible. Um, last thing is, it's been um, five days since I announced that uh, Reform California, our movement is changing up a bit. I'm stepping down from my, I have stepped down, past tense, from my daily radio show on AM 600 Kogo in Southern California. And now we're going to do this show virtually every day. Um, but that means that I'm running for California state legislature in the 75th state assembly district in San Diego County. And I'm going to need your help because I'm up against not only the Democrat machine, but I'm up against the Republican establishment who know that I'm coming up there to put a big old boot up their rear end because they've not been fighting. They've not been effective as a voice of opposition. Too many people in California feel voiceless. I'm running so that we can give voice to the voiceless and so that we can bring new energy into the fight to confront the Democrat supermajority, to stop their bad policies, and to try to flip more seats across the state. And I'm not the only one doing this. The only reason why I'm running is that in talking with candidates across the state, they all agree we need to be more aggressive. We need to be more effective. We need to be more unified, stand on principle, new approaches and technologies and tactics to the fight. And so we're running a whole entire slate of candidates in the 2024 March primary to create a reform California caucus in the state legislature, sort of like the Freedom Caucus in Washington. But we need your help. So please go online to the website, reformcalifornia.org, and chip in a contribution today. Um, I want to keep this video short. I'm going to talk about in the coming days the sort of reactions I'm getting from the establishment. Oh, they are fit to be tied. Uh, but you know what? They had their chance to mount opposition to uh, Democrats, and they haven't done it. They've gone along. They've gotten along, go along, get along approach. And that's just not working for us in California. So I think we need something different, something creative, something more energetic, something more principled. Help me out. Go to reformcalifornia.org. Until next time, Carl DeMaio, chairman of Reform California. Help us break through the censorship of the liberal media. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and smash that notification button so you can stay up to date on all the developments in California news and politics. Also, please visit the website, reformcalifornia.org, for ongoing news coverage and to join one of our campaigns in the fight to take back our state. If you can, please sign up as a volunteer or chip in a contribution. This episode of Reform California with Carl DeMaio, paid for by Carl DeMaio for State Assembly 2024.